Is your AI image generation really as effective as it could be? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how ComfyUI's K-Sampler controls your results, so you can finally take full control of your settings and achieve the best possible output. In part two of the ComfyUI Masterclass, we built a complete text-to-image workflow from scratch. Now it's time to master its core engine the K-sampler. Think of it like a digital sculptor carefully chiseling away noise step by step to reveal your final image, just like an artist working on a block of marble. You'll discover the exact settings that matter most, from seats that control your initial pattern to samplers that define how your image emerges. I'll break down each setting in a way that's easy to understand and implement right away, showing you step by step how each one transforms your results. And to help you get started immediately, I've created a ready-to-use ComfyUI template that lets you generate AI art right in your browser. Stay until the end to learn how to get up to 22 hours of free GPU usage of ComfyUI every month without installing anything on your computer. The K-Sampler is where the magic of image generation actually happens. But to understand how it works, let's first look at where it all begins. The empty latent image node. This node creates what you can think of as a blank canvas, but in a special format that AI models can understand. It's not connected to your prompt or model. It simply generates an empty container. Let's actually see what this empty latent image looks like. I'll add a VAE decoder node here, connect it to our empty latent image, and add a preview node. When I run this, see? All we get is a plain gray image. The K-Sampler takes this empty latent image and fills it with random noise based on a seed value, then step by step. Like a sculptor chiseling away at a block of stone to reveal a statue, it removes this noise in a precise way. At each step, it looks at the current noisy state and uses your prompt as a guide to know exactly which noise to remove and what details to keep. Want to see this denoising process in action? Let me show you how. Open the ComfyUI Manager and let's change the preview method to TAESDSlow. Now you can actually watch the denoising happen step by step. Opening the queue viewer in the sidebar here on the left even gives you a better preview where you can see the denoising process even better. Just keep in mind, while this is fascinating to watch, it will slow down your workflow quite a bit. I wouldn't recommend using it for regular image generation. Let's look at the settings in the K-Sampler node, starting with the seed. A seed is just a number, but it plays a crucial role in how your image is generated. When the K-Sampler receives our empty latent image, it uses this seed number to create a specific pattern of noise. Think of it like rolling dice. The seed determines exactly how those dice will land. Let me demonstrate. If I use the same seed with identical settings, watch how we get the exact same image every time I generate. But here's where it gets interesting. Let me change the size of our empty latent image while keeping the same seed. See? We get a completely different result, not only in size, but the image is also different. This happens because different image sizes need different amounts of noise. The same applies when we change models or prompts. They'll all interpret this initial noise pattern differently. Now, let's look at how we can control the seed after each generation. In the K-Sampler node, you'll see a drop-down menu called Control After Generate with four options. Fixed keeps the same seed number. 
This is useful when you're experimenting with other settings like CFG or steps and want to see how they affect the same base image. Watch what happens when I switch to randomize. After each generation, you'll see a new number appear in the seed field. ConfiUI is picking from such a wide range of numbers that you'll rarely get the same image twice. Increment simply adds one to the seed number after each generation, while decrement subtracts one. Let's look at the steps setting in the KSampler node. This number controls how many times the KSampler will process your image, removing noise bit by bit until it reaches the final result. Think of it like our sculptor working on a block of marble. In the early steps, he makes broad cuts to reveal the basic shapes and forms. As the steps continue, he switches to finer and finer tools, carefully carving out more intricate details. The number of steps you choose makes a big difference. Let me show you. If I set it to something low like 20 steps, the image generates quickly and gives me some good results. Now watch what happens when I increase it to 80 steps while using the same seed. We get very different results and it takes longer to generate. Different samplers work best with different step counts. Some can create great images with just 20 steps, while others might need 50 or more to reach their full potential. For everyday use, I typically stick to 30 to 40 steps. It's a sweet spot between quality and generation speed. One important thing to remember, more steps don't always mean better results. The biggest changes happen in those first 20 to 30 steps. After that, you're mainly refining details, and sometimes those refinements might be so subtle they're hardly worth the extra generation time. Let's look at the CFG setting in the KSampler node. CFG stands for Classifier Free Guidance, and it controls how closely the AI follows your prompt while removing noise from the image. Here's how it works. At each step of the sculpting process, the AI actually creates two versions. One where it follows your prompt and one where it just freely interprets the noise. Think of it like having two sculptors, one following a detailed blueprint and one working purely from intuition. The CFG number decides how much to blend these two approaches. Let me show you what different CFG values do. If I set it really low, around 3 or 4, it's like giving the sculptor more artistic freedom. The result might look great, but it might not match your prompt exactly. Now watch what happens when I crank it up to something like 20. The AI follows your prompt very strictly, almost too literally which can sometimes create unnatural looking results. For most images, I stick to values between 7 and 9. Keep in mind that different models might prefer different CFG values. Some work best with lower numbers, others might need higher values to give you the results you want. Always read the model card on sites such as Civit AI or Hugging Face to find out the best settings for a model. Let's look at the sampler setting in the K-Sampler node. Think of this as choosing which techniques our sculptor uses to remove the noise. Different samplers are like different chiseling techniques. Each one has its own way of revealing the final image. Let me show you some common options. The largest group is the DPM family. These all use something called diffusion probabilistic models. You'll recognize them by name starting with DPM or DPMPP. The PP here means it's an improved version of the original method. Let me show you some examples like DPM2, DPMPP2M, and DPMPP2S Ancestral. 
These images you see here were all generated using the exact same settings and seed, but with these different samplers. Notice how DPMPP2M interpreted the scene. The robot is clearly holding the flower in its mechanical hand, exactly as we asked for. The other samplers, while still creating good images, didn't quite capture this crucial detail. Then we have what we call classical mathematical solvers, samplers like Euler and Hoyne. These use traditional mathematical methods to remove noise from your image. Finally, we have some unique samplers like DDIM and UniPC. Both methods are designed for efficiency and can produce quality outputs 10 to 50 times faster than traditional approaches. In my testing, I've tried various samplers, and while each one gave me slightly different results, they all produced good quality images. I haven't encountered any sampler that gave truly bad outputs. Before you start generating, Take a quick look at your model's documentation to see which samplers work best with it. One important note, if you see samplers ending with underscore GPU, these are specially optimized versions that run faster on your graphics card. They're great when you need to generate lots of images quickly. If you're just starting with ComfyUI, stick with Euler or DPMPP2M. Once you're comfortable with these, you can start experimenting with other options. Let's look at the scheduler setting in the K-Sampler node. Think of it as a timeline manager that controls how your noise gets removed during the generation process. The scheduler decides how aggressive the noise removal should be at each step. Let me show you the most commonly used options. Normal is your balanced all-purpose scheduler it works well for most situations. Then there's Karas, which gets more efficient after the first eight steps, removing noise in a more precise way. Each scheduler affects how your final image turns out. These images you see here were all generated with different schedulers while keeping all other settings the same. Watch how the results change, especially in the robot's hand and how it's holding the flower but also in the background details. If you're just starting with ComfyUI, start with the normal scheduler and then move on to others when you start experimenting. Remember, there's no best scheduler. It's about finding the right one for your specific needs and how it works together with your other settings like steps and sampler choice. Let's look at the denoise setting in the K-Sampler node. Think of it as a strength control that ranges from 0 to 1, determining how much the AI processes your image. Denoising becomes really interesting when you're working with image-to-image -image workflows, which we will cover later in our tutorial series. But when you're creating images from scratch, like we are in our text-to-image workflow, you'll want to keep this at 1. Here's why. We're starting with an empty latent image that's filled with pure noise. The denoise value of 1 tells the K-sampler to fully process this noise, transforming it completely into your final image. Setting it to anything lower wouldn't make sense here. Unlike image-to-image -image workflows where you might want to preserve parts of an original image, we're starting from scratch. Using a lower value would just leave some of that random noise in your final result. Now that you understand how the K-Sampler works under the hood, you're ready to take full control of your AI art generation. If you're still working on creating the perfect prompts, check out my Stable Diffusion Prompt Guide. While I made it using the web UI, the same principles apply perfectly to ComfyUI. Want to try these settings yourself, but don't have a powerful GPU? I've created a ready-to-use ComfyUI template on lightning.ai, giving you up to 22 hours of free GPU usage every month. There's no installation required. Simply click the link in the description, sign up for a free lightning.ai account, no credit card needed, 
and start using My Starter Kit template to generate AI art directly in your browser. Don't forget to subscribe for more comfy UI tutorials that will help you master AI art generation. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.